In today's show, we're answering your questions about all things Apple. Today's show includes, will Apple release an M2 15 to 16 inch MacBook Air, flat edged Apple watches, how to best ask your questions, TikTok refreshes, A series Max, Apple car, Picometer chips, Mac OS 13, watch OS 9, and the next Pro Display XDR. I'm Mike Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you and if you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 1300 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. And yet, there's very little in terms of news today so we're going to get straight into your questions. Randomness R asks, will they release an M2 15 to 16 inch MacBook Air? And on this topic, I'm really torn on it. They've done two sizes of Air in the past, they did an 11 inch and a 13 inch, now we just have the 13 inch. I actually think 13 is probably the sweet spot for the Air. I don't think they need to do a bigger one. I understand that some people want to have a bigger display um, on a not super powerful computer. They don't necessarily need all the power of a MacBook Pro. However, I also don't think there's that much of a market for it compared to the 13 inch. So I think 13 inch is probably the sweet spot for MacBook Airs, although it is a possibility. If they were to do it though, how much extra would you pay? At the minute, the difference between the 14 and the 16 inch is $200. Do you think they could do it that cheap? Maybe. James Apple asks, do you think the flat edge watch is the rugged edition version for extreme sports users? Because Ross Displayman says that we're going to be getting three sizes of Apple Watch in the Series 8. I really don't know. I think it might be the other way around. I think that the one that we got this year, the Series 7, is actually the one that they had down as their rugged version. Apple said very clearly that it is the most rugged uh, Apple Watch they've ever had. The introduction video for it was it like being thrown through the dirt and... Um, people mountain biking with it and all that sort of stuff. I, I think that's what that is. I, I think that's why they had that design ready to go and were able to implement it quickly, even when the Series 7 with the flat sides uh, ran into all of those production issues. I still think we're going to get our flat-sided Apple Watch. I don't think that was the rugged one. I think the Series 7 that we have right now was the one that was going to be the rugged one because that also explains why the chip isn't any faster. It doesn't need to be. It's purely there to be a rugged version. Tim Kinetics asks, IK Answers, would you prefer we ask the questions in the comments of the news videos or the IK Answers videos, or doesn't it make a difference to you? Thank you for asking, but actually, no, it makes no difference to me. Um, I get one feed of all the comments that I haven't answered in the back end of YouTube, so it doesn't matter what video it's on. Even if it was on a video from like the beginning of the channel, if it was on the first episode, I would still see it in exactly the same way and still be able to answer it for you if you posted it yesterday. Tim Kinetics also asks IK Answers with other tech news sources suggesting Apple might do a TikTok refresh of processors on alternate years. Is there a solid reason you think it will be an annual chip refresh? Yep, and the, the reason for it is that Apple already makes the chips. Apple is already making the cores. The design of the core is the difficult part. Assembling those cores that you've designed, the uh, Avalanche cores and Blizzard cores that we have for this year, into an eight core layout rather than a six core layout is fairly trivial in comparison to designing the core itself and the efficiency and all of the IP that goes into the individual cores. Simply putting more of them onto a die once you've already worked out how to do that memory bandwidth stuff, fairly trivial I would say. And when there's that many products that are going to be relying on these cores, it means that everything can have the newest cores at the right time. Len Adams asks, IK Vances, do you think that Apple is testing and planning a MacBook, an iMac, and a Mac Mini with an A14 or A15? Uh, I think they've probably tested all of the above. Well, probably not actually in an iMac or a MacBook. They've probably tested them just on a board. Um, do I think they're planning to release them? No, I don't. I don't think they're going to release them. I don't think we're going to get A-series laptops. I think it could happen. I think they have the capacity to do it. I think they have the physical ability to make laptops that would be using these. However, I don't actually think that we are ever going to see them. Um, certainly not for the next couple of years. Once they get to the point where the A-series chips are rivaling the M1, perhaps. Uh, but I think it's more likely that they would put it into like an Apple TV box as a basic kind of computing option. Len Adams asks, IK Vances, an Apple car would have a seamless experience not only with CarPlay, but also with the mixed reality headset. There's a concept video somewhere showing Apple Glass being used in a car on a busy road, showing miles per hour along with other, or other things auto-related. No, to be honest, the Apple car probably won't 
uh, necessarily do that much with CarPlay. It'll probably be more of an AirPlay thing because you don't need all that detail because you certainly don't need them in glasses because you're not going to be driving the car. You're not going to have any real interaction with this car. It's going to do everything itself. You're not going to have a steering wheel to take over. That's not how this Apple car is going to work. This Apple car is basically going to be a completely autonomous vehicle that picks you up, takes you to where you want to go, and then gets out of the way. Um, and it could well be that we end up with big old car parks, you know, multi-story car parks that are in less convenient places uh, and not particularly human-friendly because no humans need to go in there. You just need to basically send your car to go and park itself out of the way, and then uh, it'll come and pick you up when you're done. But yeah, there's no real reason that you would need mixed reality glasses to tell you how fast you're going when it's not really relevant to you. Again from Len, uh, do you think a 900 picometer A-series chip is being planned? First there were uh, micrometer, commonly micron dies, then there's currently nanometer dies, and after nanometers there's picometers. The nanometer die first entered 1986-1987. As we're going into the last of the nanometers, we should expect picometers. Yeah, the problem is once we get down to silly small dies, um, for silicon for example, a silicon atom is about two nanometers across, um, so going much below two nanometers is going to be very difficult in the way that we have chips laid out right now. I don't anticipate we're really going to get past two nanometers because it doesn't make any sense in terms of the scales that we're talking about. What will more likely happen as we get to these tiny, tiny points is that the chip manufacturers have to go in different directions, so rather than going across and we have a flat die we're going to have probably multi-layered chips um and they can interact in multiple directions i believe there are already 3d 3d transistors out there that are in use um 3d fin transistors honestly i don't know enough about this kind of stuff to comment uh, i'm more about what kind of emojis are going to be coming in the next version of mac os okay answers while everyone's on about ios 16 what would you expect for mac os 13 and watch os 9 i think watch os 9 will have flatter sides um now honestly i don't really know what they're going to put in next i think watch os 9 might be the first version of uh, watch os where you can completely independently set up an apple watch you don't need to have a mac or an iphone to set it up with i think it will be uh, potentially able to be set up completely independently uh, mac os 13 very difficult to know i mean they haven't finished off the stuff from mac os 12 yet we still don't have universal control we don't have share play working quite as intended um, but we're getting there so i think in terms of what to expect from mac os 13 honestly no idea at this point um, i think we might get some more crossover between the ipad and the mac uh, and the iphone and the mac it's just everything's going to be more tightly integrated as usual but in terms of new features i haven't got a clue and again from len ik advances will the pro display xdr2 be thinner while using an a13 to 14 chip as a gpu um it might be thinner uh probably will be thinner because it's a chunky boy at the moment and there's no real reason for it to be when we can also put those displays and better versions of those displays into um ipads and macbooks um in terms of the A13 to A14 chip inside as a GPU, nope, don't think it's going to have one of those as a GPU. It's going to have one. Um, at the moment, it looks like it's a power management feature. It's not anything to do with um, processing. It's not to do with making the display uh, more effective. It's not, you know, it's not adding GPU horsepower as far as we know. It's purely there to manage the power and uh, to work out the backlight detail i just hope it's going to be cheaper that's my biggest thing right now and i'm not even sure they'll call it a pro display xdr i think they might just rename it as a cinema display or something again we'll see but that's it for today's show guys thank you so much for watching thanks to all the patreons over here there's no adverts on today's show either so uh patreon this is kind of what it feels like if you're a patreon and you get the ad free version thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one